Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Jamie Fenn, and in my previous video, I talked about how to process your voiceover. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up above, and there will also be a link in the description. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to take that vocal and mix it with an audio track and do something called side chaining. So let's get started. This is what it's gonna sound like if you were to try to play your voice with a song playing in the background. And whenever I do this, by the way, I try to pick a song that doesn't have any lyrics, that way the listener doesn't get confused. When recording a voiceover, make sure to have the best audio as possible. So obviously, you can't even hear what I'm saying. It's very cluttered, the, the track is taking over. And by the way, in the previous video, I showed you how you can go to the edit tab and normalize audio. I like to do that in the edit tab, but you can also do that in the Fairlight tab by just right clicking on that track, coming down to normalize audio levels. And songs today are actually produced with a very loud output. So I'm going to come down here to True Peak and click normalize. And I'm also going to do that on my vocal. And that will kind of generally bring everything in the mix to a good level. So side chaining is essentially taking the signal of the voice and communicating with the signal of the music track playing in the background. And if you want to make your vocal or your voiceover stand out in front on top of everything for your video, there's a really easy way to do it. My vocal track is on audio track three here and the song is on audio track two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the compressor. It's under dynamics under the channel three. And what I'm going to do is click on send. So that's basically going to send a signal out to any of the other channels that are listening. And so what we're going to do next is come over to the track with the song on it, which is audio channel two. We're going to double click on the dynamics, click on the compressor, and then click on listen. And now audio channel two, which is this song, is going to be listening to the audio track. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically play around with the threshold, the attack, the hold, and the release times. So now this is what it sounds like with the compressor on, with the threshold turned down a little bit. That means when you turn this down, it basically shows that it's going to be turned down to about negative 18 whenever the voice is coming through. So now listen to this. When recording a voiceover, make sure to have the best audio as possible before you start processing it. That means get the best microphone you can afford. So it's kind of up to you to determine how much the volume is turned down through the compressor. If you want it to be a little bit louder with the voice, you can turn the threshold up so it sounds like this. When recording a voiceover, make sure to have the best audio as possible. Or you can turn the threshold down to like, you know, negative 30 and then the song in the background will be really quiet. When recording a voiceover, make sure to have the best audio as possible. And what I like to typically do with the ratio is just kind of keep it around between three and four. The attack time is how quickly the compressor will work when the vocal track comes in. So I like to have the attack time down as quickly as possible. Now with your hold and release times. now. You're gonna have to play around with this as well. I like to typically keep mine at around a thousand milliseconds because if you have these too quickly, the audio track will pop up through the mix and this is what it'll sound like possible before you start processing it. That means get the best microphone you can afford and talk into the yellow on your meters when recording with the microphone. So you see how it kind of jumps in between my voice and it's kind of distracting. You kind of have to play around with the gaps in your voice during your vocal and kind of adjust these to the length that you need the compressor to react. And the release time and the hold time kind of work hand in hand together. And so when I talk, I kind of like to have my voice up front and I don't want the volume to jump back and forth. So I'm gonna adjust that back like that. Before you start processing it, that means get the best microphone you can. So what I like to do on the master channel once I've done this throughout my whole video, is I come over here and I click on, it says main one. I'll click and add an effect. And I wanna put a limiter. And that will pretty much keep your whole video from clipping. Once you have everything balanced correctly in your mix, I like to always just kind of have like a safeguard. And this will show you 
if there's any times where it may clip, I like to just kind of keep the threshold between zero and one. And this is what it looks like when you have the limiter on the master channel. When recording a voiceover, make sure to have the best audio as possible before you start processing it. And as you can see here on the window, it shows you all the transients that are kind of poking through and what the limiter is catching is clipping noise. You don't want to have a digital distortion on your final output. So this is kind of like a safeguard throughout the whole video. And so if you adjust the levels properly here in your mix window, you can look over here. There's one, two, three, four. I only have four channels open with audio. You can kind of look here up on the upper left and balance out what you want. I like to try to keep everything between negative five and negative three throughout the whole video. That way you have one consistent sounding mix. If you guys have any questions, please ask me below. Thanks you guys and I'll see you in the next one.